Hey kids, today we're restoring two damaged wooden windowsills from a 100-year-old historic home. We'll remove the damaged sections, replace them with new stock, and then shape and finish. Hey, Hi, oh, you guys. Hi, Carol. How you doing? Joe, good nice to see, to see you. Hey, Nick. Carol. How are you? Very hey, good. Hey, Nick. How's the paint business? Ed, pretty good. All right. This is uh, Carol and Nick Nahas, and they own this place. It's a nice place. How long have you been here? 16 years. 16 years, 16 years. and you've been doing some restoration little by little? Little by little. Carol, you know something about the history of this house, do you not? Well, first of all, you're the only, the third owner, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Who was the that, original? The, the original owner was the architect, Thomas Smith, who built this house in 1923. Wow and spent the rest of his life here. He actually built his dream house across the woods, uh -huh. but he completed it in 1929. Oh, because there was timing. a crash in his head, right? Bad timing. And he so stayed we... right here in the little house. Well, <laughs> not, such house. A, not such a tragedy. So so we're going to do some sill repair. you got some damage over here. We're yes. going to use, mm -hmm. utilize most of the old wood and do some patchwork with some new material. And the other sill, we're going to have to replace almost half of it. Exactly. So we can get to you doing that. You saved the pieces. Right. Good. We, good. We have That's the, good. the bull nose molding, the All original, right. which we hope you guys can use. Oh, sure. We can oh, yeah. do that. So let's get started. All right. You okay. go relax and, and okay. we'll do we'll a call good you job. We need you. Okay. All right. okay. Hey, you. No. Oh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll do good. Go. I think I remember these guys. Okay. Here's our first area of the damage we're going to take care of. It's right off the sunroof. Ow! Right in the funny bone. <laughs> I, what are you drying the wash? She looks just like your bubba. Well, her mustache was much darker. And this is why the damage has occurred. Look at that. Moisture. The hard water. <laughs> in you. Oh, you is my. Look pistol. now, this sill here. So you can see this, the expanse of this sill, and we don't want to replace the whole thing because we want to maintain as much of the original wood as possible right. because it's old wood. So this is going to be a standard patch job. It's going to be a replacement. We used to earn our living doing that. So. We're going to cut this, replace it with a, with a new stock, and then smooth it, sand it, paint it. It's going to be great. Nick's going to get us cheap paint, I hear. And his name is Nick, and look at these Nicks. <laughs> oh, look, now I would just uh, fill this with mashed potatoes <laughs> and put a lot of coats of lacquer over well, it. Well, the first thing you have to do, just like in Fantastic Voyage, you have to get rid of the damage before you can repair. So right. we're going to shrink down right Wait now. Wait a minute. There's, there's bugs all over Raquel Welsh. <laughs> Let's take them off very carefully. <laughs> going to shrink down now. You can be Raquel. OK. Yeah, we've got to cut back and make an area that's missing, not so jagged, but something that'll accept an actual new piece of wood. And what I want to do square is square it off, in other words. If you can see it here, what I want to do is I want to cut back. This is a molding here, a little square, straight a edge. molding? And then a cove molding right here. Cove molding. And the damage is all the way recessed back there, so I'm going to cut back to the farthest point, which would be kind of, where's my pencil? Here it is. I have a pencil right here. See? It's a flat pencil. It doesn't roll off any sill. And what I'm going to do is take, just eye it up, because this isn't really brain work. This is repair work. Well, that's why we got the job, isn't it? it's not science. <laughs> so that's the mark. We're kind of going to follow. Looks like, looks like the vein in my grandmother's leg. <laughs> she has very close veins, doesn't she? And we're going to take this. That's a dovetail saw. It's eastern in origin, not this eastern. Saw. This is what they used All to cut the east. your dovetails and your drawers. And dovetails. And I'm just going to crouch, eye it up straight. No. Which is a delicacy in Cleveland. No science. And I'm going to saw. <laughs> and I'm going to cut this back right to the flat of that cold Cove molding. Right. Now this is this is yellow pine, soft wood. It's very easy to cut. Also the same. See how I just did that? Yeah. The same moisture that's created the problem to begin with has also made the wood swell a little bit. You can even see that. You can see the grain has swollen under the existing paint. Then we take the chisel. This is a, a one and a half inch chisel, and you can see there's some nails in here too. So when you're using a chisel, you want to make sure that you clear all the nails out. We'll come to that later. First, I want to knock this block off. Excuse I'm going to knock me. your block off. Just chop away the wood. This is so easy. There's no, no great strength needed for this. And as you get deeper and deeper back into the wood, it gets structurally sounder. Right, because the water didn't get in that deep. Now I want to smooth right. this corner out here. And, this and we little, already cut that back with the dovetail. Yeah, a little trickier because I'm working from the left here. Now we'll just shave this. And this is just, it's tedious. It's shaving. It's tedious kind it's of work. It's not tedious. It's soft wood. It's easy. It's something you'd want to do on a Sunday morning. It's an old nail. Look at that. Take a chisel. I'm just going to back cut like this. You know who's going to love this show? Roy <laughs> Underhill. Yeah. He's our friend. Oh, but he would be doing this all with rocks. There we go. We've got to measure now because we got to put, we got to cut the stock. Right. 
even though we've been we've been chiseling this back so that it looks and feels good to us we never measured until now we but now to. we have to cut some exact or relatively exact pieces of stock to replace it so about 17 and 5 sixteenths right 17 and 5 sixteenths and we want the lateral measurement to be exact because we want to bang that in there and have right. it fit real tight and then we'll come down to this top of the cove molding which we have about two and one quarter and then the depth of course we have a depth of the actual molding is about an inch, so we'll make it about an inch and a half. Right. The the height and the what would that be? The the, the depth, depth. The depth don't have to be exact. They could be bigger because we're gonna we're gonna be planing them down. Yeah, we'll be shaving the the face of the molding and also the the level part right here. The only exact measurement we have to cut from is the is the width. All right. It is pressure treated. It's a five by five too. Five Next. and a half. See that? Five and a half by. Another five and a half. Five and a half. After the first one, I knew because I know it's square. So we got to cut we gotta two and three quarters. Right. So that means we're going to have to turn it over and cut and it we're going to be here. This is no, a mini-series. No. Richard Chamberlain's out in the truck. Jane Seymour's got all the tools. Now, first... Uh, actually, I thought we were going to use a butter knife. Set that down there. We've what got we, a table saw set out, out in the carport here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set... you got the depth up to, as high as it goes. So we're going to have to flip this to rip it the full width. But let's put the fence down and let's come up to two and three quarters. I'm going to get from the fence to the. Hold it, hold it. Oh. There it goes. There it yeah. is. There it is. Oh, there two, it is. Two, two and a half. Hey, get out of here. Get out of here. Tell, tell me this. There's no, two and three quarters. Right. And two and three quarters here. Pretty and good. And now you tighten. Tighten up that. And lay it down and Put always on use. the safety glasses. Yes, eyeglass know. protection all the time. I got these from Nick. We'll get rid of this. We'll Put use it away. later. We'll and this file one, it. We didn't change the blade. The blade is still two and three quarters. Because we're ha we halved it. Now we have to half it again. We're, we're going to keep on halving it until we have enough toothpicks for the party tonight. The height is good <laughs> on this piece now. It's a little right. over our original measurement, which was two and a quarter. And we're going to cut it down in place. Yeah, we'll cut it down in place. But we got to cut the depth. The bull nose comes out right. about an inch and what, a half? An inch and a half. So inch let's half, set it right. to an inch and three quarters so, just to make sure because we're going to have to trim everything down in place anyway. So let's cut it to an inch and three quarters right to the tooth of the blade. That's good. Now right. we that, have to measure for our length. Exactly. And here's a chop saw. Which we measured at 17 and 5 sixteenths. We take our our measurement here, 17. We wrote down 17 and 5 16 so as to remember. For those of you, count along. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. 5 16 That's a little more than a quarter. Now we take the combo square. We'll do it this way so the camera can see there. How's that? And we're going to cut on the outside. Okay, so this is the cut. It fits in. Let's see if it fits. It's a pressure fit, which means you have to press it in. Well, it's going to fit in. See that? So, but I like it the way it is. Let, let's put in some, uh, put Let, some construction adhesive. We're going to have to make it ugly green. Here's construction adhesive. It's glue. And it's an that exterior. costs more. It's an exterior grade, and this is real nice stuff. It'll hold. It'll weatherize. You should always glue both surfaces. Smush it in there. A lot is good. Get some on that bottom. That little lage there. Oh, he's beautiful. And now the idea is to get this in there. Although he is quite mighty, this is not enough pressure. And if you know us at all, and if you've ever watched us before, you know that gluing is not enough. You must clamp. A bar clamp, a pipe clamp. They're large clamps, and you can buy them at larger hardware stores. They may look expensive. They're not that expensive. You can even rent them. And inside, we're going to put a block of wood against their sill edge right. so that the back end of the jaw does not crush it. Then we'll clamp in this way. But one, hey, you don't want to tighten it all the way up yet. It's not tight. Because we well, need we another clamp. This. We can't shut the thing now. We've got to open this window. And then if we use just one clamp on that side, it would torque our new piece of trim outward. So we have to clamp on both sides. Oh, you came back. You didn't bring me. Hey, look. The, the boy is, they move from the front seal to the side seal. They, they're right outside of my bedroom window. <sighs> I have the Tulane Siobhan. He's got such legs. That one is cute. You, boy is. 
hey kids, you know what's fun? Go in the house, turn on every light and appliance, and come outside and see how fast this little disc is spinning. It goes around so fast, just like a saw blade. You can cut wood with it. <laughs> Speaking of cutting wood, cutting wood we're, we're here. back at the 1920s Manor House in uh, Mount Airy. And we're right off the dining room here on the outside, and you can see the damage here. This is the meaty job. Yeah. This is the bigger job of the two because the whole sill is damaged and we're going to replace it, cut it all the way back to the interior of the sill here. And besides, we can't go back to the other sill because we glued that and we have to let it set for an hour or so. It's still clamped, just like you saw us clamp. We'll go back and then we'll take care of that after. But we want to get this repair done, get all the repairs done, and then we'll get the painting and priming. Right. Now, we fabricated a new sill for the other job, but here we have some original material with which to See work. This. So the fabrication of this will take place. We'll cut a piece of wood, that half piece that we had left over. That'll be incorporated into the here. And then we will put on this bullnose, which Nick and Carol have saved. Right. And it'll dress the piece up rather nicely. We're playing the Contessa and the Chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> OK, put a window display, huh? It scares away the burglars. It's scaring me away, too. I'm not getting paid enough for well, this job. There's not enough room outside. Well, see exactly what, <laughs> whoa. I'll look at the camera and do the play by I'm going to take off just the front edges here. Right. Let's see what we got. Right, see, we don't really know how rotten this wood is. And a good way to see how rotten the wood is is to start to chisel it. And if it just starts to crumble all the way back under the sill, well, then we've got another problem. And we'll probably have to make it an hour show. Well, it, it's going to crumble. And we might even see a few little friends in there. No, but we do want to get it straight down from the painted part of the sill. This is the more difficult now. Oh, I'm going to This is a really hard job. It's I all right, stay right there. Around. Stay there. Oh. Close-up camera gets my bald spot. Yeah. Now we, oh, that came out all in a one. Mm -hmm. On the one. So we're cutting, you can see where we're cutting back to. Right, we're cutting back flush with the painted sill. only room for one here. Look, we cleaned it all out. See this? Nice right. and clean. But we didn't get it too smooth because then the glue won't adhere. Well, you really never would be able to get it too smooth no. unless you took everything off and cut this, take this piece off and cut it flush. So right, no that's danger crazy. of that. We'll use the other half of our 5x5 five five pressure treated lumber for this fix. Measure depth first, then length. We'll use two pieces to span the length, but the seam will be covered by the bullnose. We'll measure, and the number is 29 and an eighth. Now, now we're going to rip for the depth. I've been ripped to the depths. And we set the blade, if you can see here, as, as you most certainly as can. Anybody can plainly see. It's a, it's a, it's a three and three, three quarters. quarters. A little bit more. What are you bored? My baby, my baby, my Let's baby. Let's have Let's see what it, got, what right. it does. Here, it's right in here. Except the other way. No, this is the way. OK. Look. Construction adhesive, just like we did on the other sills. However, with one important difference, or maybe it's not even so important. After this is clamped and set, we're going to use wood screws, big giant ones, to screw it in. Why? Why, you may ask. As well Why you may. indeed? Keep your elbow away from the construction adhesive. This one is more of a major prob uh, problem. The other one was pretty much cosmetic. Right, and besides, we're going to have a, a piece of cosmetic trim, the bullnose trim, the left bullnose. over from earlier, that's going to go on top of it. So that will obscure the, the wood screw heads. Uh, we don't care what we do to that piece of wood. That's pretty much Making in it there. flush. And we'll take Now, this. of course, since it's a, we're taking the first quick clamp. There's one. Let's put this one. This will hold the piece in place. Also add some added tension, which our show always uh, beckons for. <laughs> We're drilling pilot holes right here. All the way in. And now I'm going to follow up with a spade bit, right. 3 8 inch spade bit. And I put a piece of tape right at the depth that I want it. So I'll follow that spade bit into that depth. The depth is marked at two inches. That's because we want to countersink a four inch bolt halfway into the new stock so it can catch the old sill behind it. Got that? Now we're going to screw in with, look at this, something you haven't seen on the how-to show, a drill with a cord. Everybody uses this for constant. Screws, uh, soap, and cords. I'm gonna make some little soap on here because this makes it go in easier. Thank you very much.
Look at the power tools he's got on him. You know, I got a new hearing aid. Really? What brand is it? Yo, we're back at the lovely Mount Airy Manor House, and we're at our first sill to continue its restoration. And now the, we're going to take the clamps off because the adhesive... Or glue, construction adhesive... Has dried. We hope. We'll take these clamps off. Ah, uh, the quick-release clamps. This is a, a block plane, standard block plane. Standard block plane. Yeah, cover up the... Uh, There's the blade. The, I just, we're not giving you an endorsement label. Just sharpened it. That's the cutter right there. And then, of course, you got the back iron right here, which is holding the, the cutter in there. And the block plane is just dragged across the surface. Or pushed, rather. Like this. And with this, you shave down. You get little curly cues. Which can be later uh, used as party decorations. And you just keep going. Oh. And the secret to planing is to just run the plane very gently over the surface and it'll cut. Don't push in real hard because then you'll just be fighting it. You'll be fighting the wood and you'll also tire yourself out. Caulk and putty had originally been applied at the seam where the bull nose meets the sill. There's a song title. We will re-caulk after our fix is complete, but first we must remove the old caulk, pry out what we can, and clean up what we can't with paint thinner. Now you can see where I ended the planer, how I knew how to end the planer, the blade traveling over. Once it becomes level with the bull nose, I start taking off the paint, so that's right, right where when you When the green stop. paint started flying in your eyes, right. you yeah. knew it was time to stop. That octopus got me. Look at that. It's really yeah, on there. Man. Really on there. Goodness gracious. Now we'll start sanding. And it's pretty much the same motion as, uh, you know, the guy jackhammer and they're going to say, Somebody, somebody running a belt a sander. Belt sander over there? The planer creates facets on the wood because it's flat. Sanding with a belt sander or by hand will round that surface. As often as the case, the part we fix now looks much more lovely than the old part. You know, we always like to improve things. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill some of these other digs and holes and mars with wood putty. Using a palette knife. And because I really don't want to sand much anymore because that was the last segment, I'm going to get as much of this off. And I could use a cloth if I had one, but I forgot to get one. I can always just smooth it with my fingers. I used to earn a living filling stuff, and the finger is a very good tool. Caulking tips. It's an acrylic caulk, and it's good for exterior. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove a bead of caulk down into this crease here between the building and the molding, or the molding, as we like to call it, the molding. And then, with the finger, OK, give me the finger. The finger in there. You put your finger in there, and then you smooth the caulk in there. See that? Then I'll wipe off most of the edges. Just smooth down the edges. While we're waiting for the caulk and the putty to dry on the other window sills, We're cleaning the back of the molding by using some 80-grit sandpaper, because it's been sitting around for a while. It's got a lot of old dirt on it. Gunk, junk, and you name it. Chazerai, in short. Oh, nice. Run a bead of construction adhesive. I will do from it from... there to over here. Oh. You know, the, oh. the part I like about this is that yeah. you have to follow with your finger, because it does tend to slide down. Yeah. Oi. It's good. It's good. Now let's put this up. Push to me. I want to go back and forth, just like you do in a masonry thing. We want to bring this down about an eighth inch. For the reveal. Well, that's so that the water runs off. Okay, we're gonna because we're gonna caulk that. So bring it down actually a little bit more. Take a quick clamp and just clamp that in there just gently, not too much. What kind of nails do you have there, this Ralph? This is a ten-penny galvanized finish nail. Galvanized because it had done a rust. Right, and we're going to put this into the bullnose right in the center. However, sometimes when working with old wood and a big nail like this, you could split the wood. Well, because the but you could do so, something about that. Well, you're just going to turn it on its back, and I'm just going to bang it right on the head you, with the hammer. You blunt the head a little bit, and then it, it'll inhibit the wood from splitting when you drive in. That's hey, good. but you made a little hole when you bang. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going to put the nail right in that hole. It's yeah. a whole starter. It's a dessert topping. There we are. All right, get rid of the clamps. Get rid of the clamps. File them. Hey, they're brand new. Yeah, but they're not mine. I'm going to go up the ladder here, and I'm going to put a bead of caulk in between 
the the new, seal. The new f uh, fabricated stock and the old stock. That's we left this little reveal here, put some caulk in there so water that, doesn't get down in there, expand and pop this off at my nose. And I'll stop start right here. Oh! Now I'm smoothing. I'll smooth smooth this down with my fingertip. Get a nice seal there. What I want to know is who's going to clean up out there. They're dirty like cockroaches, Jeez, but old dirty and stinky. that big one can put his belt sander next to my shoes. Welcome Hi. back. Remember us? We were here before you watched that. That's sand is down. We're still here. We're going to paint this, but we have to prepare for the painting by sanding down the wood putty, the filler. 80 grit paper, light passes. Look Stuff comes off very easily. Nice and smooth. After you're finished sanding, clean up with a tack rag. Remember, sand only the putty, not the caulk. Now, what we're using is a Heritage Village paint. Which Nick paint. happens to own at their company, so he gets all the paint he wants for free. These are classic... Uh, er, early American colors. A lot of people all over the world, when they want a colonial color... Historic is the word and, I was looking and for. And historic color, A-N, because the H is silent. Never mind. He's a nut. He goes out with a magnifying glass to an historic building, rips off a piece of historic paint, Nick. matches it, and then makes a paint out of it. Right, so people all over the world, when they want original type uh, color for their early American, or for that matter, their early Japanese houses, they go to Nick. Let's see how it looks over this repair. Oh, God. Looks perfect. Look at that. This new ugly green very much matches the old ugly green. Now let's paint these the, sills. The second sill. Right. The second sill. The second sill. Was Bergman, wasn't it? No, that was the seventh sill. Let's put this up here. I'm just going to paint everything, get everything in here, right in there. Just take your time. Take right. your time when you paint and when you... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Take your time when you paint. There we go. Beautiful, oh, beautiful shot. Beautiful house, beautiful owners, Carol and Nick. What do you, what think? Do you think? You didn't think it could beautiful. look like that, huh? Just a Absolutely beautiful great. Job. Look, here's the before and the after. So much better. And we didn't even break anything. Wait a minute. I'm Ed Feldman. And I'm Joe Lorraine. Re remember, home, home is nice. Is nice. I remember what? you guys. No, no, no. Exactly. It's not us. Are you talking it's about us? It's not us. Hey. 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 I swear hey. it was another guy with Steven lawyer. Norm. I've been, uh, he was a real nut. <laughs> Let me tell you. Don't remember him. <laughs> Don't remember too much of him. Shoe stank. I remember that. Really? It always smell like cheese. Ooh. All the time. But not a very fine cheese, I don't know. Strong cheese, I guess.